that's 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 fucked up and not that's even fucked fair. up. I will find that kind of <laughs> fucked up. Hello and welcome to another episode of How Fucked Up Is Fucked Up. How fucked up is fucked up. This is a series that runs on the concept of how fucked up fucked up is. We share with you the facts of the fucked up. On today's episode of How Fucked Up is Fucked Up, we're going to take a look at crazy competitions that are so fucked up. It's like, how? How, do, how does the human mind even think of this shit? I'm your host, Haley. Today, I am joined by Vance Michelle. Hello, Hello. and oh, welcome. Hey, how, you how doing, fucked Vance? up? Are you ready for another episode I'm of so, How Fucked Up I'm, is I'm, Fucked Up? Oh, hell yeah. I yeah. was ever ready since ready was ready. Here's a little bit of history for you. So tournaments, they date back to like the 11th century in France. This is where it was like the medieval time. So armor, people were jousting. They were doing melee, which is like jousting, but with more people. And they and they eating fucked up food. They eating food like Cornish hen. And, and, and um pigeon no because i used to go to this thing called medieval times and they used to like reenact the jousting events and the sword plays and all this stuff fancy chain mail i used to be down with all that stuff but then i i, I realized that wasn't a good time for people of my color so like, I mean, I was like, times though medieval now you time. can go and enjoy it being yeah. a man of color. <laughs> like I go to me, yeah, I go to medieval times. That's cool. But me time traveling back to nah. Go uh-huh. back there and just fuck it all up. Change Hell history. Yeah. There's uh, some credit given to a French baron, Geoffrey de Pouly. He was uh given to have invented tournaments. Yeah, he sounded like he was a pimp of all kings of all games. Oh. Oh, that was all the medieval times. That's like between the 5th and 15th century. You know, yeah. the prizes were really to be like, check out my skills. Like, I'm so cool. And then, like, you'd get bitches and money. Well, races started getting a little more exciting around the 1800s when they had cars. Now, the first one isn't that exciting. 1895, the first true race was held from Paris to Bordeaux. Uh, the winner had an average speed of 24 kilometers per hour. So it wasn't a super fast race. Pretty fast, though. That's like a go-kart kind of fast. It's like, yes. Yeah. Can you run 25 kilometers no, an hour? No, no, no. No? It's fast. Okay. All right, I'll give you that. So that then there was a race in the United States. That was an 87-kilometer race from Chicago, Evanston, Illinois, uh, and back on Thanksgiving Day. That was 1895. They're racing. They don't look like they're racing. They look like they're just <laughs> chilling. I don't know if that was at the end or the beginning, but no one in the crowd even seems that enthused. This was yeah. on Thanksgiving Day? Yeah, this is on Thanksgiving Day. That's how fucked up that race was. Yeah. How sad they was for just being outside in that whack ass car with no roof when yeah. uh they families at home in the turkeys and shit. By the 1930s, sports car racing, both amateur and professional, became popular in the United States. And the earliest cars were European made. Oh, so you can see like that looks more exciting. I think people yeah. are gonna be dropping their shit to come watch that. Yeah, look at this guy. He's getting off two, two, two wheels. Of course, I'm, a, yeah, I'm excited I, already. But I, I almost forgot about the slavery in 1930s. I was ready to town travel there. But that almost made me forgot because it's, I'm so excited. All right, like, so yeah. nowadays, people, the whole world loves competitions, whether that's cheering for your favorite hockey team or dumping ice on your head to support a certain cause. So here are some honorable mentions of crazy races and competitions that we can do today. Have you been to one of these? No, but I know a couple of the people that come through and I'll be like, uh, I see them at the end of these and I'll be like, why? Like, you look like Skittles. Like, I don't know, like it looks mess. cool. It's like running yeah. through a rainbow. Something where I could go in colorful, but come out clean. That would be like the perfect scenario of the color run. I'm, I don't want to come out and look like a fucking unicorn just come <laughs> down. I was, I was fucking like 10,000 unicorns, dude. Can't you like tell like... Bitches like, love unicorns, fans. Yeah, it does. The next one's pretty fun. This one's the zombie run. You can, you can sign up to be a runner or a zombie. So that didn't even make the cut to fucked up shit. This is just normal fucked up to me. It's preparing you for apocalypse. Like, as a matter of fact, if there was one around me, I'll go to it. 
my question for you, in a zombie apocalypse, would you rather be a zombie or do you think you could have the skill to fight the zombies off? I have the skill. I might have to hold it down until I turn into a zombie. The next one looks pretty cool. It's like a festival. It's called the Electric Run. Yeah, now that's that's what's really good. I like that. See, but does that mean everyone's like on MDMA? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> gonna run till they get a heart attack. We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. And then we'll take it higher. You are gonna flip on this last one. It's called the Krispy Kreme Challenge. You run a certain distance, mm -hmm. and then you have to eat like a whole thing of Krispy Kreme donuts, and then you now, have to run back. Wait, now that's a fucked up situation to even be in. Like, isn't that not good for you? I just felt a little kind of wheezy right now. I just had a turkey sandwich, <laughs> and I try to walk up the street. That's automatic getting you queasy. You yeah. look at them, you're going to be queasy. Those are a bunch of queasy people right there. After this, I'm going to be like, I don't want to see another Krispy Kreme in my motherfucking life. Well, today we are here to talk about the craziest competitions that are fucked up. Fucked up. We're going to see how fucked up it can get there. But these are the top ones that I could find. And uh, the first one, it just kind of bridges on animal cruelty. It's called the ferret legging competition. Oh no, crazy. At first, like it sounded it's like, I don't know, like a ferret fashion show. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, who can get the cutest pair of leggings on a ferret? Right. But it's not that. The competition is to put two ferrets into your pants. Mm -hmm. And whoever has the ferrets in their pants the longest wins the competition. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's bad business. And I say bad business because when you have more than one um, ferret, it's actually called a business. Oh, really? Okay, so there's rules for this. After you have two ferrets in your pants, there's nothing after that. There's, who wins? There's nobody wins. You can't be drunk because apparently that's going to mess with your ability to have ferrets in your pants. Um, the ferrets can't be sedated, so you can't just have ferrets sleeping in the bottom of your pants. The worst one is you're not allowed to be wearing any underwear. It's gone too far. You, if you're bad in this life, you yeah. come back as one of those ferrets. You know what? I can't believe that this is actually regulated. That ain't that, that ain't a ferret in my pants now. Uh, I'm just happy to see you. So, like, how do you win this race? And not move from the pedestal. And whoever stands the longest with the ferrets in their pants wins. But the thing is, I couldn't really find a real prize. But I assumed that the fame and the popularity is enough for these small town folk. Yeah. Um, like the ferret must have teeth. Yeah. So I don't know if they're like mean ferrets, but I've met a couple ferrets. They're not that bitey. If you're just standing there, they're probably just going to fall asleep, no? Oh, no, 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 no. If they feel like they got to go somewhere to escape, they don't feel comfortable in some place, they're going to keep moving and moving and moving around. Oh, well, I don't know how comfortable I'd be in this guy's pants. Yeah, exactly. If I lace my trousers up. With could... like what? They did not say I can't put coke in my pants. I don't think you want to put coke in there. That, they're going to dig a hole through your dick. Oh, yeah, right? Yo, okay, okay, okay. Never mind, never mind. Switch that. CBD, CBD. I think that would be the better mm. the better option. I tell you, the origin, they said it was started during the time when only the relatively wealthy in England were allowed to keep animals for, hunt, uh, for hunting use. Oh, forcing okay. poachers to hide their illicit ferrets in their trousers. My ferret in my trousers for hunting. It's all about consent. You didn't ask for consent for those ferrets to be in your pants with your dick. I think that that's sexual harassment and animal cruelty on many levels. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> you gotta ask. The goddamn ferrets. 1970s, the sport came to life, and since then it's been described as a dying sport. I wonder why. There what do you mean it was a dying sport, man? You tell me people didn't fucking line up to see people <laughs> like have ferrets in their pants. This you know? next one is really exciting, totally interesting, something I think we would want to go watch, like if you're ever in England. It's called the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake. The idea is you take a wheel of cheese and you roll it down a super crazy steep hill and then as many participants as can be there, run down the hill trying to catch the cheese. It sounds harmless, um, yeah. but this has caused 
lots of broken bones and lots of broken teeth because the hill is so steep and they just run down as fast as they can. They are literally rolling head over heels. It looks absolutely insane. It, it must be some really good ass cheese. I'm, I'm, I tasted some cheese now. Like I understand the passion behind this. You're race. a chef. Yeah, you know, exactly. It must got that England air in it. Stink air and stink air is good for cheese. Some well, cheese it's up. gotta be good cheese because the only prize is the freaking cheese. cheese. That's been rolling down the hill. Yeah. Wow. The prize is the cheese. Getting worth like, like I could go get it in the grocery store or some shit. Like, I mean, it's still probably gonna cost you like 40 bucks for mm, that cheese. It's a family thing. Exactly. It's yeah. tradition. Tradition thing. Generation thing. Like, yeah. You know, and it's like one of those things to do it for your family. Have the title. Right. Cooper I would, Hill. I would rather marry a man who got the cheese rather mm. than marry a man who put ferrets in his trousers. Uh, yeah. I can see it goes a long way. It holds weight. You hold the cheese. You probably hold everything. You probably like the man in Cooper oh, yeah. Hill. That's probably mm. what it really is. You getting mad pussy. Oh, that's the man with the cheese. Oh my God, guys, saw the cheese guy yeah. and we had some of his cheese. It was so cool. The cheese, you want cheese and crackers? They'd be like, I thought you never asked. <laughs> it has to be something behind that cheese. They're not telling us. So the first written evidence of cheese rolling is found in a message written to the Gloucester a town crier in 1826. Each year, the event becomes more and more popular. Contestants coming from all around the world I'm going. I mean, hey, that sounds like it's pretty cool. I was like, you you win that cheese. You're the king yeah. of the hill. Third on our list, it's just an absolutely insane idea. You're just like, I want to do the most intense race I can think of, but I want to do it with my significant other. Wife carrying. The prize mm. is probably one of the most interesting things. The winning team brings home the wife's weight in beer and five times her weight in cash. If I lose a race, so my girl right in the water or something. They have specific ways they hold their wives. Yeah, got one of them look like he about to put them in the Undertaker move, the tombstone pile driver. How do you even train for that? You are probably training up to be able to lift a lot of weight. Meanwhile, you're like, honey, eat that extra piece of pizza because we got to fatten you up so we can take home a bunch of beer and money. The more happy she is, it's a disadvantage. You see, that's crazy. Got the number one guy. They've been training like this is the Olympics. I like that, though. You know, I like I like to see uh, couples in um, games and shit like that. You know, <laughs> it's all about synchronicity. It, can, it ain't even about the the strongest couple there. It's about the one who's got the most chemistry. I feel like one black couple is gonna change the motherfucking game. One heavy black dude's gonna come in, and his wife gonna be like at least two hundred pounds. And this shit about to change the game. And there's even husband racing. This is great. Oh my. Yeah, the one with the helmet is adorable. That other couple looks pretty happy. Of course she's happy. She got his dick right on her neck. Oh, off yeah. on your neck. Got that teamwork. You know, you it's gotta trust teamwork. each other. You gotta trust your husband's not gonna fall backwards. Mm -hmm. so what if they fart? Cause I will find, I will find that kind of fucked up. Both trusting each other not to fart on each other. That's crazy. Yeah. Say check it. Like, say if there was this chemistry to, like, a point where the dude farted and you knew that fart was coming and you weaved it like the Matrix. Because you was so like, you If you thought the race was fucked up alone, the origin stories are pretty hysterical. The wife carrying originated in Finland and the history is based around the 19th century of Rokane and the Robber. There are three stories as to how this sport was created. Number one. Rokanen and his thieves were accused of stealing food and women from the villages in the oh. area he lived in. Oh then he God. carried these women on their backs as they ran away. No, dastardly, devilly dude. You think that like wives are just stealable. He should be in a villain in a Disney movie. It's, it's not like Robin Hood. It's not like they're stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. The second, it was that uh, the men would go to the villages near their own uh, to steal other men's wives and then have the women become their own wife. I mean, if you're uh, stealing from a bad man and you're like, you want a good life? Come with me and hop on my back. Medieval days when you had to steal the bitches from the other town. The third one doesn't have anything to do with wives, but they were thieves and they were trained to carry big, heavy sacks on their backs, which eventually evolved into a sport. But, I mean, this is cool. I can totally jump on this and the cheese 
These mm. are two cool competitions. They're Actually, fucked they're, up. They're pretty But they're cool, neat. Though. The last one, it's like, it's the definition of how fucked up is fucked up. How fucked up is fucked up. Yeah, this one is called the laxative challenge. Ah, oh, no. It's fucked it, up. It's fucked up. It sounds, this one sounds crazy. We oh. already know it's not going to be good. Like, yeah, it doesn't even sound good. Like one no. dose. No, no. No, no. Exactly. The reward is small and the punishment for losing is so fucking evil. The idea is you take four times the recommended dosage okay. of laxative yeah. and the first one to poo loses. The last one to poop wins $5,000. It sounds like you can fuck up your insides. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to take that many laxatives. So is it really worth the $5,000 if for a whole month you've been like slowly dosaging on laxatives? Right? You know what? I think I think I think I'll do it because Wait, I, you're saying you would do it? I think I'll do it. I think No, I'll you do. can't. I won't like Why not? it. No. I could train myself to do it. Matter of fact, a fart's coming right now and look at me. Fuck, I don't want to make eye contact. I think I could do it. I think I could do it. All about holding cheeks. Like I feel like my intenses are a little fucked up right now, but I can still make it. The punishment is that the loser has to be locked into diapers for a week. And having to go to his opponent's house to get changed and given another dose of laxatives. Like, it's creepy and weird. Like, why? This is cringy. Like, if it's the winner, that's not, that's fucked up and not that's even fucked up. That's a oh, punishment. That's fucked up. Because if the winner has to then change the other person's diaper. I'm not with it. Because yeah. what if I do lose? You tell me yeah. I gotta change the di diaper? Hell fucking no. That's E straight chipping, yo. I can't. I can't even think of anything worse than that as a that, competition. Exactly. I don't even want to, I don't even know how you fandom to even think like, yo, you know what? I'm going to sign up. What What was that? That's a, what's that? $5,000? Wow, that looks nice. How you get to $5,000? You got to, you got to take laxative and, and be the last one not to shit. You're like, well, I've come this far. Right. And they tell you the punishment and you're like, no, no. I think I'm gonna pass. Oh, oh, hell no, no, no. Hell no to the no, 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 no. Well, that is all of our topics for the most fucked up races and competitions in the world. Some of which seem pretty cool. Some of which are to never be spoken of again. We'll That's... never talk about this shit again. I'm sorry I even put it on the list because that. I can't even. I can't even believe there was something so good. What? Her conclusion to all this that, like, I think racing is always fun. I think it can bring communities together. But uh, I think that sometimes the human race takes competitions too far. That's what we need to stop. Being competitive is what it is. It's a legacy kind of thing. Going to these games and then you're there with your community. It's a town thing. Night so we could all watch Sunday night football together. It's all just to bring people together. What about the pooping one? Oh, the pooping one? No, that better not come back. Better stay underground. Everybody. It's just fucked up. That's what it, it just, is. It's really fucked up. That's what. That's yeah, that's my conclusion down. thing. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. My name's Haley. This was Vance. We hope to see you next time on how fucked, fucked up, up is. It's fucked up. That shit fucked up. It's fucked up. The ferrets in the pants. Ferrets in the pants. Ferrets in the pants. Ferrets in the pants. We got to come up with a theme song. If we do get the ferrets coke, I will be there to watch. Ferrets uh, in trousers extreme. <laughs> what did you think? Were these fucked up enough for you? Oh, yeah. I'm glad that these things didn't end up in the Olympics. Because imagine, imagine that. Huh? If they get in the Olympics, then I'm going to question human race. <laughs>